It's been a while since I got to make a video with me fanboying about My Hero Academia, and the overhaul arc gave me plenty to fanboy about. You know, MHE as a whole is one of the shows I feel I shouldn't like as much as I do. Sure, I do enjoy Shonen, but I want something new from them, instead of a story I've seen a hundred times before. And MHA really isn't that special. At a surface level, the overhaul arc is a simple rescue arc. You have some setup, the heroes attack overhauls based to save Aerie, and then you have these like one-off battles with side characters against side villains, where for the heroes, all hope seems lost, and they put all their spirit into a final attack and win, and then you get a longer battle where the main character against the villain of the arc, which also seems hopeless, but then the main hero wins with a power-up and the power of friendship and all that. Yeah, that description makes it feel like it could be out of Fairy Tale or Naruto or any other shonen out there. But the things that make My Hero Academia stand out so much isn't the broad storytelling. It's instead the small details, the ideals that the character represents, and the way the show knows how to grip the viewer's emotions to deliver an experience like no other. If you don't like the show to begin with, this arc will not change your mind. But as a fan of the show, it's my favorite arc yet. It really embodies the heart of the show. So for the video, I wanted to go through the arc, talk about the many small details that make the show so special, and how they come together to create my favorite anime of all time. And this started with episode 1 of the season, the dreaded filler arc. And it blew me away! Now, it was very obvious what it was doing. It was a filler to introduce the season and sort of recap the previous three seasons just to set up where we're going from here. Story-wise, it does not contribute at all, and the episode could have been left out with no impact on the story. But even so, it set the stage perfectly. The episode had a reporter going around trying to interview the students to see who would be the next symbol of peace. Near the end of the episode, we see that the reporter is also a big All Might fan. And not just that, had his father saved by All Might. Through this single episode, the re reporter's story was brought to life, fitting perfectly into the impact All Might had on the world, and more importantly, people's hearts. Deku's monologue reveals how there's a lot of unease in the world with All Might retiring. But then the reporter reveals how he knows that Deku is meant to be All Might's successor. And the reporter also reveals the truth, that he was looking for hope in the world, and found it with Deku, which is so impactful. Especially when you consider this scene in the context of the overhaul arc. Or even in the context of the real world. We are looking for hope in the world. Especially with the situation in the past couple months. We want something to believe in that will make everything alright. And I think that's why people are so drawn to this story. They're looking for hope. The hope that Deku and All Might and these pure heroes represent. But then the season really gets started with episode 2, which was just crazy. In fact, I think episode 1 made episode 2 better by being like a calm episode to reintroduce the characters in the world, and then the story really got started in episode 2. And boy, did it get started. The big scene here is a meeting between Overhaul and the League of Villains. This scene was a huge surprise because it featured the first non-flashback character death in a very gruesome way. But while this definitely establishes Overhaul as a villain and sets a darker tone for the show, it also shows Shigaraki trying to take his place in the world as a true villain, just like Deku is trying to establish himself as a hero. Shigaraki is trying to keep his team together despite them being all angry about Manja's death. I hope I pronounced the name right. And he is also trying to move past yet another failure. Really, Shigaraki is one of the most interesting aspects of the show since I cannot think of another show that has a villain grow throughout the series like Shigaraki. And then episode 3 was the introduction of Deku's relationship with Nidai. And we see that Nidai may be an even bigger All Might fanboy than Deku. Well, a small aspect of the show, I appreciated how they are talking about the time All Might saved a kid who lost control of his quirk. They mentioned how their rescue never got much attention because it wasn't All Might defeating the villain, which ties into the themes of being a hero that the show is always going back to, and how a hero is far more than someone who beats up a villain. That's very important for the second arc of this season. Another theme explored through this episode is what it means to be the best. Nine Eye warns Deku that he'll probably fall behind in class by working with him, but then Deku responds saying that if he wants to be the best, he cannot pay attention to those around him. Which is true. If you want to be the best at something, you have to follow your own path and not just follow others because then you would always be behind the people you are following. Nanae also makes a comment 
asking how Deku can contribute to society and be useful to others. This episode has so many lines to this that have so much to unpack. They are words Nidai is giving to Deku to try to help him. But more than that, these are words that are meant for the viewer. They are a challenge against a life of doing nothing. You can spend a life philosophizing about what is good, complain about all the bad in the world, and dream about how things should be. But without action, it's pointless. A hero is someone who fights to make the world a better place. Not someone who just fanboys about the heroes out there, makes memes, or just makes pointless YouTube videos. And then during their fight, Nine talks about how Deku was not worthy of one for all. And that Deku pushes forward with all his will, but still fails. The one thing that impresses Nidai is that Deku intentionally avoided all the All Might posters in the room. Oftentimes when a hero fights a villain, the villain will fight in a way that isn't fair. The hero cannot go all out, but a hero has to overcome that anyway. And again, this ties into the battle against Overhaul that we see later on. And then episode 4. Another major episode. It was one of the biggest in terms of the events that unfolded, but also in the themes that were conveyed. At the start of the episode, Deku and Mirio run into Overhaul and Eri. This was an incredibly tense scene, because Deku knew that he needed to save Eri, but he also knew that picking a fight wouldn't be wise. And that really is one of the biggest challenges for heroes. Throughout the first three seasons, we've seen Deku grow, both in confidence and power. But there's also wisdom in knowing when to strike as a hero and when to walk away. But you can tell that leaving Eri with Overhaul breaks Deku and Mirio's hearts. I could almost complain that Eri was just made to be this cute and innocent girl to get us emotionally attached to her. But it worked. One of the things the show is so good at doing is making us care about characters we've barely seen. There's a certain purity or nobleness in them that makes them easy to root for. And in Eri's case, we feel the desire Deku and Mirio had to save her that made us care about her even more. Then, later on in the episode, we learn about Nidai's vision of All Might dying. This season is the darkest of the show so far, and hearing about All Might's death is heartbreaking. All Might is such a pillar of strength, even after he lost his power, for the world, for Deku, and for the viewer. He is an inspiration, but while he is the greatest hero the world has ever seen, his fate is to die. This devastates Deku. At the heart of the show is Deku's admiration for All Might, but also All Might's admiration for Deku. They vow to fight this fate together. Which, if you know how this arc ends, you'll know that this is something they might just be able to do. And I think this might be my favorite episode in the entire anime, or even the entire medium of anime, though I'm not quite ready to make that claim yet. The next few episodes were solid. But they were less memorable than the introduction to the arc and then the battles against Overhaul himself, so I'm not going to talk about them much. Though I do want to mention Fat Gum, because he is an amazing side character. The thing I like about him is how much he embodies the idea of being a hero. At first, he seems like a throwaway character, someone they introduce because they need more professional heroes in the story. But it did not take long to realize how much he has the wisdom to be a great hero. He's very strong. But more than that, he really knows how to care for his protégés and encourage them to reach their full potential. And yes, Kirishima's parts were great too, and I'm glad to see him get some solid moments to stand out. Though there's not much I can say that's not just standard praise for my hero. Then we got to the battles with Overhaul, which is where the arc really came together. Episode 11, the battle between Mirio and Overhaul, blew me away. I will admit, when I first watched the episode... I didn't really care for it. But I think that was because I had been slightly spoiled on how it would end, and I was watching in Japanese and on my phone while on an airplane. Not the greatest watching environment. But then later I watched it when I got back home in English, and I loved it. The episode leads off with Overhaul talking about the drug that can rob a person's quirk. And this really sets the stage for the battle to come. MHA is not a show known for killing off characters. But by showing that quirks can be taken for good, there is a ton of tension. There is a real risk to the heroes here, even if they don't die. Because quirks are at the heart of what makes the heroes able to be heroes, Mirio and the other characters are putting their dreams at risk in this battle. Also, I have to say it, but Twice and Togeta are annoying and made the episode worse by being there. They should have just focused on Mirio. 
Maybe they're part of the reason I didn't like it much the first time. But back to the good part, the fight between Mirio and Overhaul. And I love how Overhaul goes after the ideals of the heroes, trying to bring Mirio down by making him remember how he failed Aria last time. Namoto is also trying to do the same thing, making Mirio doubt himself. And this really plays up the clash of ideals that the battle is going for, while also showing the mental battle within Mirio to try to stick to his beliefs and not be discouraged by what they're saying. We really see Mirio's guilt here, how much he hated his failure, but how that is driving him forward. And there is so much joy when Mirio finally got Eri. It is not just joy at seeing Eri being rescued, but it is showing Mirio overcoming all of his previous failures. This battle is a battle for Eri's heart more than anything. Overhaul is constantly telling Eri to come back to him, wanting to destroy any hope that she might have while Mirio is trying to encourage her. And I love how much the battle lets Mirio shine. He is not only going against Overhaul here, but also several of Overhaul's strongest underlings, all the while trying to protect Eri. He has every disadvantage possible, but is fighting pretty much on equal terms despite it all. He's using strategy and pushing his quirk to the limit. And I absolutely love how much Mirio embodies what it means to be a hero. He's willing to take on any odds to save the innocent. He even justifies the cliché of a hero's cape, showing more than anything that he's the ideal of a hero that we've seen all throughout comic books throughout the decades. But despite his best efforts, Mirio is shot by the bullet that took his quirk. But the only reason he did so was to protect Eri. Once again, showing how much of a hero he is. We get a flashback showing how hard Mirio had worked to master his quirk, adding to the tragedy, showing what he lost. Though even after losing his quirk, he still fights with everything he has, able to stand up to overhaul for quite some time. But sadly, he can only last for so long. People criticize this part, where they use the stills instead of fully animating the fight after Mirio lost his quirk. But I'm going to be honest here. I think the way they did it made the scene even better. The scene is not meant to be a flashy fight. MHA is not a show about flashy battles. It's a show about the heart of the characters and the ideas that they convey, though with a few flashy battles on top. But more than the great animation, it is about the emotions behind every punch, the ideals clashing with every blow. Using the stills here lets the emotional music really hit home, in the quotes from young Mario showing the ideals he is fighting for, in every frame of Mario shows his determination until he cannot fight anymore. This minute of anime is one of the most emotionally charged in all of anime, and I do not think it would have been as good if they'd animated it more traditionally. Also, some background that I found interesting is apparently the battle after Mirio lost his quirk was not in the manga at all, so the anime added that. Now, I will not say a difference between the anime and manga justifies or makes the anime better or worse, but I do find it interesting to consider the context for why the anime might have done what it did. Something else really interesting about this part is how it serves as a great callback to the first episode when Deku asks if someone without a quirk can be a hero. Mirio proves here the answer is yes. Even without a quirk, he's fighting Overhaul and fighting for Aerie's heart. Sure, he could say that he loses the fight, but he keeps fighting until Deku got there, so I wouldn't even say it counts as a defeat. And more importantly, he shows Eri how much heroes want to save her, which is the reason she dumps into Deku's arms later on and gives him the power to defeat Overhaul. And if that doesn't prove Mirio is a hero without having a quirk, I don't know what would. But of course, the battle isn't over yet. I love when Nidai rushes over to Mirio and Eri, embracing them. You can feel the pride Nidai has in his student, but also the worry. And then there is a chill as Overhaul announces that Lemillion has lost his quirk. But then as the battle shifts to Nidai fighting Overhaul, I love how Nidai is going after Overhaul's mindset. Just how Overhaul tried to go after Mario. He was getting Overhaul off balance mentally, looking for a chance to strike. We also get a flashback here to Nidai saying that he will never look at someone's distant future again. Not important now, but remember that. Though, of course, despite his best efforts, Nadai also falls, and even with his foresight, Nadai cannot see a future where they can win. And then, despite his strength, Deku is also defeated. And I really appreciate Overhaul's comment about Deku being easy to predict compared to Mirio and Nadai. It shows how much Deku still has to grow as a fighter. That's just one of the small touches that always adds to the show, showing Deku's strength and determination, but also his inexperience. 
And then we got to the part with Miria running out of strength, trying to get Ari out of there. It shows that despite him being hurt so badly, he is doing everything he can for someone else. Then Overhaul gets Ari to come back. And it's so painful. We see Ari's kindness. We see the hope that Mario had given her. And we see that she doesn't believe anymore. And of course Deku is so determined despite it all, even if it seems hopeless. The other heroes show up, don't really do much, sadly. I wanted Uraraka to shine some. But Overhaul tries to get away with Ari here. And I love how she looks at Mira's cape, remembering what he said. The cloak represents the ideas of the classic hero. She reaches for the cape and then fully embraces that ideal, jumping into Deku's arms. The song Might Plus You plays here, which raises the scene to a whole new level. It's not your traditional hype song for a battle like this, but instead it's filled with determination, showing the connection between Deku and Eri and all the other heroes who came for her. They even cut out all the sound effects when the song started playing to truly emphasize what the scene is all about. Then, of course, the final stage of the battle is Deku using Ari's power to constantly be at 100%. The symbolism here is obvious. Two characters are combining their weaknesses together to create a power that would be impossible otherwise. They even defy the fate that Nidai foresaw. This may be simple and obvious, but it is so satisfying to see. It also ties back to the beginning of the season, with the reporter looking for someone to replace All Might as the symbol of peace. And while Deku may not be there yet, he is taking his place alongside the other heroes to do what All Might did, and that is to save people and save their hearts. So yes, the battle ends, the heroes have won, but not without a cost. Many of them have been severely injured. Mirio has lost his quirk. Then the League of Villains make their move, taking out Overhaul and stealing the bullets he made. And I really like seeing Shigaraki here. Not only did he get back to being the main villain of the series, but it was cool seeing him overcome his failures to defeat Overhaul for good. And I really want to see more Shigaraki now. But the most shocking result of the battle was, of course, Nidai's death. This came after Aizawa was talking about how everyone else would recover, making Nidai's death an even greater shock. And as this happens, Mirio rushes into the room, limping on what I can only assume was a broken leg. His voice is filled with heartbreak. Nadia looks into Miria's distant future, seeing him become the finest hero in the future. Remember how I mentioned that Nadia had previously vowed to never look into someone's distant future again? This is him breaking his vow, so that he could die with the hope of Miria's great future that he will not live to see. Which is such a great way to end this. Something else I think this scene is showing is how Deku is now the one inheriting the mission from Nidai to save All Might. So yeah, those were the reasons, or at least some of the reasons, that made this arc so special. Though of course we're only halfway through season four, and the second half had a lot of great aspects as well, though in a very different way. But this video is long enough, I don't even want to know how long I've been recording at this point. So I will save that for another time. Thank you for watching though. It is always fun to ramble about the reason I like a show as much as I do.